Good morning, or good evening, good afternoon, depending where you are in the world. And uh, I, of course, am Ben Ochart, and you are at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And I welcome all of you. And um, wild times for the uh, fish keeping community. And we will be getting into that for sure. And uh, let's take just a very quick look here and see... Uh, a lot of early birds today, some as early as an hour, and uh, I think that's great. Uh, big shout out and welcome to my wonderful moderators, uh, GP and, and uh, hey, Kevin. Kevin uh, must have got up early today. Maybe the neighbor's dog was barking or something. <laughs> Good to see you here, Kevin. Hey, Denny. How are you, Denny? And uh, I'm sure that uh, Candy will be joining us shortly here. And... Uh, so welcome to everybody that is on the stream, and uh, I'm sure we'll be getting more as we go along. Danny, thank you so much for that good audio and video. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, sometimes you don't know until you hear back from one of the moderators. It's been um, very, very cold, very, very cold uh, everywhere, and we've gotten down to nine degrees in Nashville, which is uh, kind of unheard of out here. And uh, even though my fish room is uh, is insulated, it doesn't. It's not on the central heating and cooling of the house. It just is what it is. I have a floor heater that uh, an infrared floor heater that's working uh, very very well, uh, as can be expected. It's still a little chilly, but it's it's warm enough in here where I can actually be in a t-shirt. This is actually uh, a Hat Nation t-shirt. One of the uh, the orig the originator of uh, of Hat Nation was of course uh, uh evan alexander ifg he was the uh, the first official hat nation you've seen a lot of uh copycats since then but he was the i think he's also the one that coined the phrase uh predator hap because there is no such thing as a predator hap i think he uh was the first one that started uh, calling them preds <laughs> at any rate um you know i was going to um spend some time on something that happened here but in light of what's been going on i'm going to take a little bit of a different direction uh but uh, first let's go ahead and uh officially start uh, start this uh live stream with the usual dropping dropping logo of the channel If you're new and always like to be learning about uh, keeping fish, tips and hacks, and not just from me, but from all the great people that participate and comment under the videos, uh, you know, we all learn from each other around here. And uh, there's a quite an active community of people sharing ideas. Uh, so it's not just what's in the video, but what's under the video. So if you like that kind of uh, camaraderie, that kind of interaction, uh, hit that, you know, hit that sub button and the bell. And that will encourage YouTube to share the channel with other other YouTube uh, participants. So, um, quick announcement: a very sh a big shout out to our friends over at the Cichlid Shack. The uh, they are, I guess you'd call them the official sponsor of the channel. They are helping out quite a bit. And uh, don't forget that um, if you go to the uh, Cichlid Shack, be sure to use uh, Shack Attack Ten. Shack Attack Ten. And uh, something I borrowed from the Lakers. But Shack Attack 10 will get you a 10% discount at the Cichlid Shack. So uh, I know uh, the Cichlid Shack sometimes plays the stream in the store. It's a little bit early for him now. But uh, maybe after he opens, he'll play the, the replay. If you want to help the channel, go on over to the Amazon. Uh, use the Amazon link to get to Amazon. Whatever you buy on Amazon, whether it's from the store or from anywhere, if it's a qualified product, we'll help the channel. You can also pick up uh, T-shirts and mugs and all kinds of stuff. And you can also um, a tea, you can pick up the T-shirt and the mugs at Teespring and use um, live stream for 10% off at Teespring. So uh, that's, the, that's the end of the commercials. So uh, thank you, everybody, that's on. Uh, it looks like we've got some more on now. You think we'll get it up over 200 today? I think we're at uh, 100 right now. And uh, 
Hey, Evan. Evan Glassifer. Good morning, Evan Glassifer. Mandalore Ale. Hello, Mandalore Ale. And uh, Richard Lewis. Hello to you, Richard Lewis. Bluegrass Aquatics. Hello, Bluegrass Aquatics. Owensboro. Not too far from here. Certainly closer than Los Angeles. And uh, let's see. Chi Kyung Chong. Good morning from Malaysia. Wow. I'm loving it. Hey, Danny. Danny Nichols. Junior Pacheco, good morning to you, Junior. And let's see, it's the Oli Fish Guy. Howdy from Olympia, Washington. Hey, Oli, my wife has fond memories of Olympia, Washington. Beautiful uh, part of the world. And uh, at any rate, hey, Tony, good to see you here, Tony. And Cat, hey, Cat Sailor, thank you so much for the uh, that video you sent over to me. Much appreciated. And... Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get off this chat. I'll spend all day on it. and uh, But it looks like we're up to about 120. That's pretty good, 120 folks. I want to thank those of you who gave me a uh, thumbs up before we got started. Usually it's kind of funny that the live stream hasn't started yet, and there's usually a thumbs down. <laughs> so I want to thank those of you who gave me a thumbs up before we got started. That, that was re refreshing for a change. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to get into uh, some things about uh, the 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 Benga Sunshine the Benga Sunshine uh, put up put up a great battle and he lasted for over a week and uh, and then he finally expired I mean I I lost him and um, I'm sorry to say he you could see his dorsal he was a beautiful fish but the damage to his tail was just too much and <clears throat> I think what that does is it it you know it it creates a tremendous amount of stress on the body, uh, you know, their, their organs and everything. I mean, they, it ju they just go under tremendous stress when they get that kind of a beating. As you can see, his tail went all the way back to the raw meat. And it happened, uh, you know, in the wee hours of the night and he was pulled out of the tank as soon as the damage was noticed. So it wasn't like he was neglected and left there to suffer, but um, he just didn't survive it. And I came down, uh, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday morning and he was turned over and end of story. So I feel bad about that. He he was a fish with great potential, as you can see in the markings. But um, that kind of thing happens, you know. And 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 I want to put this in perspective because um, and I was going to spend a little more time on on things that have happened. And but putting it in perspective and looking what's happened to my friends, which is one of the reasons I'm wearing this Hap Nation shirt, because Evan Alexander posted a video that was um, a, a bit uh, a bit heartbreaking to watch. Some fish that I know he has a lot of affection for uh, didn't make it uh, because they just simply couldn't, uh, they, they couldn't put up with the lack of power. Uh, sure, there are always things that we can do. We can always um, we can always ask ourselves, okay, could, is there is there something I could have done differently? Could I have done a better job? Uh, yeah, you know. And I think the takeaway that Evan talks about in the video is, okay, time to seriously consider a generator. Um, you know, my hats off to Nashville. Um, knock on wood. You know, whatever they're doing. Uh, they were predicting the possibility of blackouts. If I had had blackouts in this garage fish room, it would have been game over. I mean, the tanks would have chilled way down. Uh, I could have covered them with blankets, uh, things of that nature, but with no power, um, it would have been just a matter of time probably before, uh, before I would have experienced uh, fish loss. So my hat's off to Nashville, uh, whatever they did for their power grid. But uh, my friends in Texas, I've received emails uh, and I've had messages on both Facebook and uh, Twitter or Facebook and Instagram uh, and emails to my ben.o.cichlid at gmail email account uh, describing the devastation that people are experiencing uh, where they've had, uh, in some cases, a complete and total 100% loss of all stock. Um, I can't imagine uh, some of our salty friends who have those very delicate uh, coral setups that, uh, you know, minor changes in temperature, um, in dosing, things of this nature uh, can can create, uh, you know, almost an instant death to some of these corals. 
So I feel very bad about those folks. Uh, there's there's a fish store, I believe. I, I haven't watched the video yet. I saw Evan just posted a video on a fish store that may have lost thousands of dollars in their stock. Um, again, I mean, my goodness, we got to have backup generators, but in some parts of the country, it's not something you would necessarily think uh, is needed, but surprise, surprise, here we are. So uh, <clears throat> even in sunny California, uh, with the, you know, the, 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 the poor power grid there, the, the rolling brownouts and things of that nature, uh, I was seriously considered, considering a, a backup generator before I left California because it was not uncommon for us to get, uh, one time we had a six hour, a six hour blackout. So, uh, at any rate, uh, my problems, my loss of, of a fish, uh, after he took a serious beating is, uh, yeah, pales, uh, sure it hurts, but I tell you something, it is nothing in the scheme of things of what's happening to some fish keepers in, um, in the Houston area in Texas in general. So, uh, you know, my heart goes out to those folks and, uh, and let's instead, let's uh let's go ahead and focus on the positive what do you say and uh, there are some some great positives and uh i'll share them with you there's a uh a quite a bit of a um shuffling going on in the tank behind me and uh this uh, this fish is just beautiful look at the finish on this uh johnson i this is a Plastidochromus johnsoni solo, called solo because they often find them swimming alone in Lake Malawi, loners. But um, at any rate, what's happening is fish that were very passive, uh, such as this guy here, who was getting nipped and nipped and nipped and chased, are now fighting back. They're getting more comfortable and they're asserting themselves. Look at the fins on this guy. And uh, so he's starting to fight back. You'll see in a second here that he's uh, become a bit more aggressive. Uh, the the Johnson I solo the the um, and the auto Fairnix tetrastigma have been pretty much staying out of everybody's way. And um, but this guy here, there we go. He's going to show off. Look at the blue in his dorsal fin and the massive egg spots. And you can see him there. He's actually chasing somebody. He was not chasing anybody about a, a week ago he was just sitting in a corner and trying to be invisible so he's become more comfortable look at the blue in the tail the blue at the end of the dorsal uh there he goes again chasing somebody i'm very happy to see aggression when it's coming from a fish that's normally docile and has been a target of other fish uh the same thing is going on with the um with the jake this one right here the eureka red Eureka Red Jake uh, was was being picked on and kept in a corner and everybody was having a turn with him. And now, now he's fighting back. And so is the Xerox. The Xerox, which normally are just hiding in the corner or just being shy, all of a sudden the Xerox realized, wait a minute, I'm actually bigger than a lot of these guys. The deep water, he pretty much stays out of everybody's way. Nobody seems to mess with the Bicolor 500. The uh, phoenix that you see right here was pretty much being a bully to everybody. But since people have been, uh, you know, since other fish have started fighting back, he's retreated quite a bit. All the autopharynx wants to do is just cruise around and stick his head in the, uh, in the sand. He dives down into the substrate. It's actually very funny. It goes all the way down to his eyes looking for morsels. But the... Uh, the Phoenix has stopped being a bully, and uh, you know he's been checked a few times. The um, the fish that was originally in the tank, the little strawberry, he's actually been chased by this by Skittles, and uh, so he's been checked a few times. So he stopped bullying, and Skittles is trying to hold his own. That fluorescent there just stays out of everybody's way. He's a beautiful fish. Look at the spots on him; just a very pretty fish. And just stays out of, out of everybody's way. Nobody seems to want to mess with them. Has markings very similar behind the gills, like a bicolor 500. Look at the tail and the tail pattern on the, on the, on it. Just a beautiful fish. Here's another one of the original fish, the uh, redfin borlei. 
again, just sort of stays out of everybody's way. Never really been an aggressive fish. Not like the, uh, not like the little strawberry. The uh, flame tail Maduka has healed up and also asserting himself a bit more now. And as a result, is not being picked on. So everybody is feeling a bit stronger. You saw the John Stoney there chasing. Uh, everybody's acting a bit stronger. And I like that kind of behavior because it means that no one fish is going to get run over by the other fish. And so there's still a sorting out. I can't answer for you who the boss is. I do notice that nobody messes with the Bicolor 500. I don't know why. He's, he kind of hangs out in the back in the back all by himself. You can see him. Um, no, you can't. He's up there. He's on the right side there. Just peeking out from the, you know, go in on him. There you go. Nobody seems to mess with him, even though he's not particularly aggressive. Maybe just his size. But look at that. He's a beautiful specimen. The, uh, the stripe behind the gills is very prominent, which sometimes you'll get a real dull one. You know, a dull stripe. In the uh, in the in the uh, South American tank, you can see here the uh, that little electric blue is just so pretty. That little electric blue Jack Dempsey. If you look close on the uh, if you look close at the red spotted Severum, you'll notice he's got a little mustache above the upper lips. If you, if you if he stays still long enough, you can see he's got a little mustache. The uh, geophagus are doing great. The uh, Heckli are doing great. They're starting to get, you know, like specks of that, um, that bioluminescent, you know, that, that neon coloration that you see in the body. You're getting some red in the tail, a little red in the little green and yellow in the fins. I'm just really excited about these, uh, these thread fin and the stri and the striped geophagus. Just really excited to watch. And of course, it's always fun to watch them sift through the sand like little machines. Because in the mouth, out the gills, in the mouth, out the gills. They're like little, uh, they're like factory equipment. So, um, so that's the update. That's the update on the fish. And so that's a lot of good news as far as I'm concerned. All the other fish, apart from that, um, that unfortunate uh, benga, all the other ones are doing well. They're blossoming uh, and developing nicely. And um, and I'm starting to see the signs of fish asserting themselves. And uh, when you have African cichlids, you don't want a fish that's going to be in there and get run over. For example, I'm thinking of getting a uh, putting together a group of lethronops. I saw some beautiful lethronops over at the uh, cichlid shack. Uh, I, I'm thinking of starting a Lethronops group. If I was to throw some Lethronops into that uh, into that African cichlid tank, they would probably be torn to shreds. They'd probably get beat up very quickly. They're very, very docile, uh, don't like getting into it with, with anyone. And so um, you just wouldn't do that. But I'm thinking of doing a separate tank and doing a little little colony of Lethronops. They're, they're, they're just very, very beautiful fish. I really miss my uh, red cap which is currently under the care of Kevin Green and uh, who sometimes posts uh, videos of the, uh, of the red cap. So I reminding me of, uh, of that great fish, but at any rate, that's the update on the tanks here. Uh, I think some Lethronops are in my future. I think, uh, I think in, a, in another in another two weeks I'll be use I'll be moving probably one of the ve viejas and one of the um, red shoulder severums uh, to the to the tank here, and keeping a very close eye on them to see how they're doing to make sure that nobody uh, uh, nobody gets out of hand or gets too crazy. So um, E K O E D E K O E D do you still have that eye biter? Um, e k o e d echoed. Is that what was that means? Echoed. I um, the eye biter was part of the collection of fish that I had in California before I came to Tennessee, and so what I did is I sold all of those fish, every single one of them, 
and the iBiter is now in a new home along with all the rest of those uh, big, uh, big haps. Uh, I, I am in the process right now of working out um, a 220 gallon. I think that will probably be the home of some large, uh, some large cichlids. Your, your, um, I'm talking about, you know, your trouts, your your hawks, your eye biters, your venusus, your maybe a polystigma, maybe a, a living stone eye, something like that. Because I do miss the personality and and the size and the color and the the you know the interaction that you get with those with those big guys. Uh, sometimes they can be brutal, but so can the you know so can peacocks. Peacocks can be uh, just as brutal. Somebody asked me about uh, violence in a hap tank, in a hap tank versus a peacock tank, and I tell you something I've observed with haps is that once it, it seems like once they settle on a pecking order, once they settle on a boss, unless the boss is a jerk, which can happen sometimes. But uh, once they've settled into an order, it kind of calms things down. It's like, okay, we know our place. Doesn't mean that a fish isn't going to challenge after a while, because that happens. But you can go for a very long period of time, which I have, with large, highly aggressive haps and have it be relatively peaceful. And um, and they, the, the question that somebody asked me was, what do you think about the aggression in a hap tank versus it seems like peacocks uh peacocks are are it's like they're always having to assert themselves they they're they're maybe they're a bit more territorial maybe they're a bit more competitive uh maybe they think that there's some breeding down the line and so they want to knock out the competition even though it's an all-male tank which i'll never understand but um it seems like the peacocks will go at it now by go at it, I mean what you just saw in that video. You'll see some chases. Uh, if you get either in a hap tank or a peacock tank, somebody that is out to kill other fish or a particular fish, then you have to take action. You have to remove that fish. You have to perhaps put the other fish in quarantine, something. You, know, you have to take action. Uh, but I have noticed that in a hap tank, even with your bigger, more aggressive haps, your eye biters, your venusas, like I had in Los Angeles, once that settled, once they got settled in, that was it, you know? So, all right. I'm not sure if I missed any super chats. I'm going to check. A super chat is your way of supporting the channel by throwing a few bucks at it. You can do it at the bottom of the chat if you're inclined. Super chats are appreciated. And it doesn't look like I missed any. And... If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, go ahead and ask them now, and I will go ahead and, and pick them up. Um, Elijah Davis, let me see, was that Elijah Davis? No, I'm sorry, that's Kevin Malloy. What's the code for Elite Cichlids? When you contact Elite Cichlids, just tell them you want the Ben O-Chart discount. I think it used to be Ben O or Ben O10. I'm not sure, but just say you want the Ben O chart discount, and uh, and they'll give you they'll give you a break. And they, they love to hear it because it means that they're getting something for the plants that they sent me. If you notice in the tank behind me here, I'm not sure if I can turn this. Let me see if I can turn it without destroying all my settings here. Let's see here. There we go. And let's see if we can focus. That plant right there is attached to a piece of driftwood. And it's just a beautiful plant that was put together for me by Elite Cichlids. And uh, whereas the plants that are attached to the driftwood that you see there, those plants, those are real plants. That's a little bit of java fern and some anubias attached to drift, driftwood. That's some driftwood I picked up over at uh, at the critter, the aquatic critter here in Nashville. These on this side are artificial. And I think eventually I'm going to go all artificial because from what I've heard, both Severum and, uh, 
and even the geophagus to some degree, to some degree are going to start tearing up the plants. Now, if we switch over, let's switch over and go. Um, those plants there are entirely artificial. And that's because I learned already my lesson, a $100 lesson. It cost me about $100 to do my experiment to find out that the uh, African cichlids, once they put on size, they just go ahead and tear up. They just tear up plants. Even the Anubias, and even though some, some folks out there will say, well, the Anubias are, are bitter and they live in the shady areas of, you'll find them even in the lakes around Lake Malawi, and because they're bitter, the African cichlids won't eat them. And, no, that's not true. Not true at all. They will get destroyed once they put on size. They'll start nipping at them and they spit them out. It's like they take a bite and go, oh, gee, that was bitter. And they go all dory on you. You know, they take a bite and they, uh, oh, that was all bitter. Oh, look, a plant. Take a bite. Oh, man, that's bitter. Oh, hey, look, a plant. And so, uh, yeah, they uh, don't, uh, don't bother with green plants in an African cichlid tank. That's my advice. You waste a lot of money. And, uh, <clears throat> hey, Edward, Edward Tomaszewski. Edward Tomaszewski, good morning to you, sir. Looks like you've got your coffee. I'm glad to hear that. I can't imagine life without coffee. And uh, good morning to you, Jay. Raise your fish, good morning. And Sean will all be complaining about how hot it is when summer comes. You know, Sean, somebody... Somebody already talked to me about that. They said, Ben, if you're having trouble with the cold, you know you're going to have trouble with the heat. Now, hopefully having the door open between the house and the garage will get some of the air conditioning in here. Maybe if I put a fan up there. But eventually I'm going to have to get into some type of a heating and cooling system in the garage. So I'm going to be pricing some units out. If you have some advice uh, as to what you think would be a... It doesn't have to be cheap. I don't want cheap that'll break down, but I also don't want it to be like a $10,000, $20,000. That's not going to fly either. But if you have an idea of a good way that you can heat and cool a garage, let me know. And uh, the insulation that I put on the garage door has been a lifesaver. It it's really makes a difference. As I mentioned, I've got a, uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt. So, and it's, I don't know, what, 30 degrees outside? So it, it's not bad. I am running a heater in here. I do have an infrared heater at 78. A small, small unit. Now, keeping the door open between the garage and the house, I'm not sure how that's going to fly because we have, we have a small mouse. I have a mouse in here. I've seen one mouse. His name is Hap. Hap. Hap the mouse. He looks like a little Russian. Have you seen a Russian mouse? They're, they're just a little round fur ball, like if a, if a hamster and a mouse had a baby. Little round fur ball. He might even have been somebody's pet that escaped and somehow got into my garage. And he's around here somewhere. He goes under the fridge. and uh, But I haven't seen him again, and I don't see any mouse dropping, so maybe he got, got out again. I don't know. But uh, my wife said keep the door closed because she doesn't want Hap to get into the house. I think it's cute. She's terrified. <laughs> uh, Jerry Martin. Uh, hi, Jerry. I'm glad you're here. And, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if, if we do have Aquashella this summer, I would like to go. I would really like to attend. I think it'd be fun to meet a lot of you in person and, uh, and also, uh, just kind of get in touch with some of the vendors and see what's going on, meet other YouTubers. You know, I think that would be a blast to do that. So yes, I would love to, I'd love to do that. If it's possible, if, if we're back to, uh, if we're back to a semblance of normalcy and, uh, you know, you're right, Tasman. Uh, it, it is uh, like, like the subtitle of today's video it it does when you have when you have uh, when you have African cichlids, and I've said this before. If you are, uh, you know, faint of heart, if 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 
if you suffer like one of well two of my kids i would say uh two of my kids actually go into physical distress when they see an animal uh suffering or being mistreated it bothers me it bothers the, my other two son you know my other two boy my two boys but uh but my daughters actually they, they they get they they get into actual distress when they see that if you're that type of person uh, then you should probably not get into African cichlids because at some point um, a fish is going to uh, be beat up. You're, they're going to have fin damage. They're going to have marks on their side from where another fish hit them. Uh, I had a fish hit so hard one time that uh, he lost his swim bladder, uh, was damaged. He just flipped right over and was swimming upside down and then died. I mean, it, you, you see some stuff that is pretty crazy sometimes. So... Uh, for those kinds of folks, I suggest a community tank. Uh, get some neons, you know. Get some cardinal tetras. Get a uh, angels can be violent, but may, maybe an angel or two. There are a lot of fish out there. That uh... so let's see what you have to say here, Ralph. I'm glad you're here. Glad you finally made it. Mandalore Ale, Mandalore Ale, I invested in a generator last year. It has been used on tanks and refrigerator several times. Highly recommended. Uh, that's great. That's great. I'm, and uh, I think I'm going to follow your advice. I think it would be a great place to invest. And I think I'll uh, start a fund and we'll start it with today's super chat. I think I saw a super chat somewhere in here. <laughs> I saw a five dollar super chat from somebody, I, but up oh, there it is. I just went by it. Let's see here. I'm trying to find it on the chat. Thank you for the coffee, echoed E K O E D echo. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And Richard, thanks. <laughs> Richard, I'll put it towards the generator fund. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. And I'm going back to your comments. Andrew K. just started a Maltese and Julie tank. Never kept African cichlids before. Wish me luck. Good luck. <laughs> I don't know. Are those uh, are those known to be aggressive? Maybe the no, Julie's. I don't think Julie's are, are known or have a reputation as an aggressive cichlid. There you go, Sean. Sean emailed Elite Cichlids about the plants with driftwood. I'm telling you, I, I, I thought it was, I think it's beautiful. And you, know, you get real wood in there. Um, there's a little bit of a debate about whether wood helps to buffer, but, um, you know, or affects pH. I, I'm a, I, I have real wood in the AC tank because in, in a hope that it can, it can lower pH, you know, gradually, slowly. We do get very hard water and I imagine very high pH out of the tap here. Good for cichlids. Good for African cichlids. Uh, Tony has a good question, and you know, Tony, I would be, uh, I would be guessing, I would be guessing. I, 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 I've had tanks that have gone for six to eight hours with no power, and uh, when the power came back on. I was able to fire it back up and and there was no no fish loss. The fish didn't seem to be under a lot of stress. Uh, certainly taking the fish, taking the fish uh, or taking a bucket of water out of the tank and pouring it back in maybe every half hour or hour just to kind of oxygenate things. Um, some people cover the tanks with blankets. Uh, you know, your hot water heater has warm water in it, even after the power goes out. So maybe moving some hot water into the tank occasionally, uh, you know, but six to eight hours and da getting down into the 60s, maybe high 50s. I've seen fish tolerate into the 90s during uh, the summer when I had a tank outside in the garage. So they do have a, a range they can tolerate, but um, I, I, I would be guessing if I told you how long they can go, 
if you look at what happened, what's happening in Houston, what do you get? You get a 48 to 72 hour period. And in some cases, the tanks, uh, maybe the fish were killed by no oxygen, right? I mean, as the temperature goes down, I think oxygen uh, will dissolve. You'll get better oxygen in the water as the temperature goes down. But then uh, because you have no, no surface agitation, no bubblers, no, no power heads, no filters running, breaking up the surface, there's no oxygen getting in. So unless you're stirring the tank... Some people had to leave their homes. Uh, some people were in their cars. Some people went to hotels uh, only because the houses were getting so cold. So I don't know. I mean, two, three days, and then those folks were, were uh, they were coming back to dead fish. Uh, which ones died because of a lack of oxygen? Which ones died because of a drop in temperature? That, that's uh, hard to say, hard to say. So um, let's see here if I missed a uh, Mandalore Ale 495 for the generator fund. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for that. And Soup Bone. Thank you, Soup Bone. <laughs> I love that name. Thank you for that super chat. I appreciate it. All right. <clears throat> Let's see if you have any other questions. Go ahead and throw them out at me. I am all ears. Uh, Thomas Silva says it lost power for 30 hours and unfortunately lost two fish. Two fish out of how many? How many, Tom? And uh, what size was the tank? How many fish were in there? Were those the bigger fish that you lost? Sometimes the bigger fish, uh, because of their oxygen requirements, Sometimes you lose the bigger fish, the bigger fish first, and the smaller ones will will uh, tend to to survive a little better uh, with less oxygen. With temperature, however, maybe the bigger fish are more sensitive to the massive drop in temperature. So it's hard it's hard to say. Uh, Jerry Martin. Jerry Martin says if you suspect internal parasites. How long to treat with Metro Flakes? Well, first we have to look at why do you suspect? What are you seeing, Jerry, that makes you suspect uh, parasites? Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Uh, are you seeing a uh, almost a see-through, thread, thready uh, poop coming out of that fish? Are you seeing a little bit of bloating? Are you seeing a caved-in stomach? What is it that's making you think parasites? Uh, and I'm assuming you're, you're thinking internal parasites as opposed to, uh, you know, hookworms or, you know, gill, you know, you know, parasites that can attach to the gills and you see a fish that's laboring with their breathing. You might have some external parasites. Those are different from the ones that get into the gut. And I imagine you would treat the entire tank because, I mean, fish are just nasty this way. I mean, a, a fish poops, another fish comes and scoops it up and uh, spits it out. Another fish picks it up, scoops it out. Another fish poops, another one. So if you've got parasites, treat the entire tank. If you have a big tank, it's going to cost you a lot of money in meds. But I imagine I would treat at least for a week. Uh, to get the most out of your, um, you get the most out of those meds. If you suspect internal parasites, do what you're doing. Uh, deliver the medicine in food. Maybe soak the food in something like Focus, uh, some kind of a garlic mixture, so that the fish are more likely to eat it. Um, so a Metro Focus combination, and maybe treat for uh, maybe five days, three to five days. And then keep an eye on it. If you think that you're out of the woods, if the poops are looking normal, if the fish is eating and putting on weight and filling out, um, you know, put your put some put some activated charcoal back in the filter so you pick up the residual meds. 
and uh, maybe do a few water changes, you know, get the tank back to normal. But I would say about a week and then observe, see if the fish uh, is putting on weight again. If, if you still see a, a caved in stomach, chances are the parasites are creating problems. I, um, now, I have had fish that have lived a very long time, have been very aggressive eaters, uh, aggressive in general, and have had a slightly caved in stomach, but their poops were normal. The poops looked normal. They didn't have a, a stringy poop. So sometimes you'll get a fish that's a little lean looking, might be a little bit with genetics. So you might have a genetic issue going on where the, uh, the fish just looks that way. Uh, doesn't mean that they have parasites. However, if you get that little, that caved in stomach and that very glassy see-through thread thin poop, chances are something is in that fish, you know, in the intestine and you're going to have to get in there with some Metro and either soak food or buy food that's already infused with the medicine. Colo Silverado to help Keep the videos coming. Thank you, Colo Silverado. Very appreciated. And um, I thank you for that. I'll use that for the generator fund. All right. Crypto Bengal. Thank you, Crypto. Thank you, Crypto. That's appreciated. Roger says he's overrun... Roger says that he's overrun with snails. Roger Glashofer. Zebra loaches. I've also heard clown loaches. There are several loaches that will eat. There are several fish that will um, take care of your snails for you. Just do a, a just do a quick search or on Google or or uh, you know on YouTube. For, for snail eating fish and uh, they'll take care of it. Once they get going, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to stop them. Let's see here. Hello to you, Ken. Uh, Ken and... and uh, I'm glad you're getting something out of it. All right. So I have uh, I have an upcoming video. I have a video coming up on, uh, and it was sort of spurred by the uh, by what occurred with that Benga sunshine. A video coming up on the reasons or causes, you know, causes for death. You know. When a fish dies on you, and it's obvious, like with that Benga sunshine, it was uh, there was no 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 mystery. There was no mystery why this fish died. The fish was put under serious stress, uh, and uh, in the middle of the night, and by the time I was able to remove him from the tank, uh, the damage was down to the meat and might have resulted in some infection. Maybe some bacteria that it got, you know, maybe some infection that got into the body, and eventually it killed him. So there was no, there was no mystery as to what was behind why that fish uh, died on me. But sometimes you'll have a fish that that seems very, very healthy, and just sort of tips over on you, and you're you're at a loss. You're like, I don't get it. I don't see any fin damage. I don't see any marks on the side. I don't see any. Where he might have been hit, I don't see any lip lock damage around the mouth. There's no signs. Uh, there's no outward signs. Now there are some killers that can be just internal. There are some diseases that can be just internal that are not contagious that that fish might have had. Uh, sometimes you'll get a genetic anomaly, just like you get adults who seem normal, you know, humans, and you know, at age 42 they. They dropped dead from a heart attack. Uh, they had some sort of genetic anomaly, and all of a sudden they die. Same thing happens with fish. You get a fish that has a genetic anomaly. Some, uh, uh, I've even heard that even cholamera sometimes can get into the 
in te- internal intestines and kill and without an outward sign it just goes into the fish destroys some of the workings of the uh, i had that happen to a couple of the fish when i had a colomeris uh outbreak years ago and um, i'll remember one fish in particular was swimming along and like i looked away and i looked back and he was upside down i mean it was like his heart just stopped so um there are some things that are strictly internal also sometimes it's just old age you get a fish uh you buy a colored up male you don't know how many years it took for that male to color up and in captivity sometimes these fish have a much shorter lifespan so you're beating yourself up you're t- you're checking your tap water you're checking your tank water you're doing all this crazy stuff and um the fish was just old reached the end of his life cycle and died and now you're beating yourself up no other fish look sick all the other fish are thriving and healthy like if i had had a breakout if after this happened after this happened i had started to see rot on the on the tail dorsal or anal fin of the other fish or around the mouth i would have been very very worried i would have said man i've got i've got some some fish rot some fin rot going on i better take some action uh, and i better treat this whole tank but um this was a a one-off uh situation and so um and in that in that sense it, you know in that sense i was fortunate that it wasn't a tank wide type of situation it's just the result of a beating now some fish might be carrying around bacteria just like humans carry on bacteria and and stress and cancer and what have you but they keep it in check the bodies keep it in check somehow uh, but under long periods of stress, these things will manifest themselves because the immune systems become compromised. And so, again, that fish might have been carrying something, and under so much stress, that something became prominent, and the fish died. So, um, a lot of factors to consider, and I'll probably be putting out a video on uh, on these sort of mystery deaths, mystery deaths that occur where you scratch your head because the fish was active and healthy and eating and interacting with you and and the next morning they're dead and you pull the fish out and take a good look at them and you can't tell and these mystery deaths drive us crazy. So, uh, all right. So, um, Colo Silverado, Colo Silverado, if you're in the United States, if you're in the United States, please send me your uh, mailing address. I have got something for you. It looks like you were the top, the top super chat today. And uh, I'm going to send uh, something to you. If you're in the United States, in the continental United States, uh, I'll, I'll get something out to the top super chat. And just just a little sign of appreciation. And uh, you can send it to Ben dot O dot Cichlid. Ben B E N dot O dot Cichlid at Gmail dot com. Also, folks, if you have questions, if you have questions for me, um, sometimes if you send them to me via Facebook or Instagram. It might take a while before I get to them. Better to email me. I'll probably see it sooner if you email. Now, even if you email, it might take a few days because I've got a lot going on. But I will get I will get back to you. I promise, and uh, and give you the best answer I can. If it's a topic that I'm not familiar or feel comfortable with, I'll I'll, I'll probably refer you to the uh, to the Ben O'Cyclid the Ben O'Cyclid group, this group here, Ben, Ben O'Cyclid. This is a group on Facebook. It's full of great fish keepers with a lot of good advice. Uh, if you have questions, you can go there as well. You'll, you'll get some input. It's very helpful. We keep the trolls out so that no one's going to jump on you because you ask a question. There's no stupid questions. Now, if you want to join Ben O apostrophe Cichlid, 
please be sure to answer all the questions that are asked when you try to join, especially the one about the agree to the group rules. We approve probably 50 a, a month to join, and we probably disapprove 50 a month because they don't answer the questions. I don't know if they just don't understand the question or don't want to answer the, I don't know. But we hate to disapprove people. So be sure you answer all the questions. That way we know you're not a bot. We know you're not a troll and you can get in. Also follow on, on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid. That's the same as my email address at gmail.com. That's my name on Instagram. You'll get some behind the scenes uh, look, uh, looks at things and, uh, and, you know, I'll post things there that you, you don't see elsewhere. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here unless you have a pressing question that you want to ask before we, before we sign off. If I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry. I try to get to as many as I can. And uh, I do want to do a big shout out to my uh, moderators. And I'm not sure, did Candy not make it today? Uh, I know Candy can get busy sometimes. And uh, Tony, I finally installed the Expert Matic and it's working great. And uh, yeah, I, I love that thing. It, it does great at polishing water. And when the bubbles stop, if the bubbles ever stop, uh, either give it a tap and get them going again, or if it hasn't been if it has been running for a long time. But if it has been running for a while and the bubbles stop, that means it's time to clean it out. So, so just pull the bottom three chambers out, rinse them in tank water, put them back in, and you're good to go. Uh, whether you want to use charcoal in that expert matic, that's up to you. Uh, after the first cleaning, I throw out the charcoal and I leave the middle chambers empty. That's just me. I think it gives me better water pressure. Carrie Wallace. Thank you, Carrie. Much appreciated for that super chat. And uh, Roger, you are welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for that. Very appreciated. And uh, let's see here. Fatal, Fatal Vapes. <laughs> what a great name, Fatal Vapes. All right. And uh, top MF in here, Ben. I've had geophagus for two years. Still hasn't colored up, just gray. Uh, do some not even color up? I think they all color up. Uh, males and females. I think males might have slightly more prominent fins. And if they're going to have trailing fins, it's going to be on the more of the males. Um, all I can say is be patient. They will color up on you. And uh, people ask me for tips on coloring up. The only tips I can give you on coloring up is um, the only tips I could give you really are great husbandry right i mean keep the water parameters good keep your water pristine uh stay on your maintenance and feed them high quality food uh my fish by the way are loving i mean absolutely loving the um the extreme and i love the way it smells i mean sometimes you smell a fish food and you go oh man that's horrible but the the the, the extreme flakes those things uh they smell kind of yummy I haven't tried them yet, but uh, in a real pinch, I might just break it open and have a... <laughs> but the Extreme Flakes actually have a good, wholesome smell, uh, and my fish are loving them. So I'm giving them, like I normally do, I give my fish a combination. They're getting Extreme, they're getting uh, Piscine, they're getting uh, a little bit of North Fin, they're, they're, they're getting uh, Zoomed, the Zoomed uh, Spirulina, and uh, so they're getting a little bit of a lot of stuff. Uh, the only thing I haven't given them recently are the uh, Omega-1 frozen cubes. And that's the, uh, the hot tip that I'll end off with. If you have a, a fish that isn't eating, get some Omega cichlid cubes. They're infused with garlic and fish can't resist them. They're, they go nuts. Uh, they go cuckoo for Cocoa Pops for them. So... Uh, so at any rate, that being said, I want to thank all of you for joining me today, spending a little bit of your Saturday with me. Uh, you are very appreciated. 
You're a great group of fish keepers. I tell people, come over to the live stream and interact because we have a great group of fish keepers. And uh, I really mean that. And I hope to see you next Saturday at the live stream. I'll keep these going as long as I can. And uh, all of you in Houston, my heart goes out to you. Uh, hang in there. And uh, this will pass and uh, soon be a faint memory. And I'm thinking of investing in a generator. Uh, your Super Chat money has helped me with that today. So thank you, everybody. And I think we'll end off with that. Bye-bye.